It wasn't a hundred grand. Yeah, it's a hundred grand. Had to be retracted because the dude failed the polygraph. Yeah, so in his mind, he thought he purchased it because. Well, we don't know if that's what happened exactly. Right. That's the story. Right. 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 Zaldane, you're going to have to help us on this. This is our second (laughs) podcast. We have no idea what we're doing. We all we know Neither is that from the first podcast we got enough comments saying why in the heck are we wearing headphones when we're only sitting. Hold on, hold, hold on, hold on. It's the cool thing to do. I have a podcast. By I the read way. a book on how to do a podcast, and they said make sure you have a headphones <laughs> and little microphones. You got to lean way forward do you, do and talk wear, into. Do y'all wear headphones? Uh, no. And the first thing I said when we sat down to do this first one a couple of days ago is why are we wearing headphones? Why are we wearing headphones? So like so we can hear each other. Yeah. I can hear you. You sound really nice. Because my ears don't work. Why are where is he at? <laughs> Why are we wearing headphones then? Well, if you have a mic <laughs> issue, you know that. He had to take that off so he could talk. I can't phone. hear you. <laughs> I, I, I can't hear you. No, it's good. All right. This is our second podcast. What's the podcast called? We haven't come up with a name yet. Oh, wow. We actually did that in the first podcast, which just posted today. Nice. So this will post in a few days, and we'll come up with the name by the third one. Very the cool. Mac so, Show. The Mac Show. What's that stand for? Martin Aaron and Canterbury. Huh. SMC yeah. stands for Scott, Matt, and Canterbury. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like it, actually. <clears throat> what do you think, Zaldane? What should we? What is yours called? Do you have a podcast? Zaldane yeah. has a podcast. Yeah, our, is it Zaldane po- yours? Dude, what is my it? wife runs it, and I just come along for the ride. Mm-hmm. But um, no, yeah, the Bilge podcast, we do it Bilge, out of a, I like that. Yeah. That's where you let it all out. <laughs> right. Or, so like, the, okay, so the Bilge the is like... You know, at the end of the year, like you look in your bilge area, and there's like slime over here. There's uh, swelled you know, up baits. Sc- swelled up baits. Yeah. There's like screws missing. You know, down in the so like the bilge is just everything. It's just like everything. I, like it. I actually like that. That's creative. Yeah. See, MACs. I mean, that's just kind of yeah. basic. I think we got to make something that. a little better. You got to come up with something. Have you looked at the comments? A few of them. Hey, have, the, have the fans pick it. Yeah, there, there's a bunch of there's we'll some good feedback. There, there's some really good feedback. Good. One one guy that we're gonna probably delete forever. Really <laughs> send people to his house or something. Is it that hillbilly eighty seven guy? I don't know, but no. he was very <laughs> mean. You got one <laughs> very mean. probably the same guy, yeah. different name. Yeah, he yeah. said, "Why are you guys copying a cod podcast?" I'm like, how, "I mean, it's how a podcast. That, it's a podcast. I mean, yeah. what does that even mean? Uh-huh. Like." How every, dare you have a microphone? Why, why should you even like have a TV show? What? I mean, uh-huh. what? Like. Uh huh. Come he on, said dude. we'd look like three geeks with headphones. Well, now we're four so geeks. That's what we should we're call it. We're four. four geeks. Yeah, we're yeah. throwing him a curveball this <laughs> yeah. week. There you go. Three, three geeks with headphones. <laughs> I'm glad to be here. I've never roomed with you guys, and this is uh, this is amazing. This yeah. is yeah. Really is. Club. You'll probably never room with us again. <laughs> no. after the, this the one. Clarity yeah. Club is this is pretty legit place to stay. It's nice, but uh, Whitney Phillips, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's who owns this place, and Trey, and and they have it's right here on Santee. Santee's right through the woods, a few miles, maybe a half mile. And they have. I think it's that way. <laughs> Are you sure? We we no. saw deer on I think the it's property. That way. The road's that Whitetail. way. The road's <laughs> that way. The lake is yeah. that way, dude. Uh, I have an inner. If, I have if we get up GPS. in the morning and Matt hears turkeys gobbling, we he probably won't go hunt. I mean, fishing. Is there hunting season? I'd go with him, dude. Yeah, turkey season's in. Right <laughs> Why don't you just hunt Carolina? right here in the morning? Well, this place is covered. I do up have with a tag left. You do. South that would Carolina. be awesome. Can we film it? He's already killed one. Can you film it? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, who here has experience filming a turkey hunt? We can put Byron. Byron can go with you, but he talks too much. He'll scare the turkeys away. <laughs> Are you away. okay over there? <laughs> He's like, he you'll have to like, be quiet. You'll have to be quiet. He's looked like that, that nerd in first grade that knows the answer. He's over there like this. Yeah. Like, totally. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's your guy. Awesome. He's okay. your guy. Well, if y'all hear one goblin in the morning, let's go kill it. We heard him last time. I'm in. So, but no, seriously, this place is cool. We got to give it her a is. shout out real quick because they have I don't know ten or twelve places to sleep in the cabin. They have weddings here all the time. They have this big pavilion, a shooting range, a pond over here. They have a big lake it's on beautiful. the other side of the mm-hmm. property, Lots and they have these deer, a deer lease and a duck lease that you can like be yeah, part of. Yeah, yeah, they sell yeah. they sell hunts to the public. They're yeah. open. Uh, you mm-hmm. can go to their Facebook page and book a hunt. Mm-hmm. Well, we filmed I think two, uh, two maybe three. Uh, SMC YouTubes mm-hmm. and a TV show in that lake, yeah, not far from here, and we crushed them. <laughs> big ones, huh? I crushed them actually. Yeah, big, big ones, I, five, I six, them. sevens. I think McCoy yeah, crushed them better than anybody. Well, McCoy did. McCoy did not edit all week. That had whole week. So where's all the episodes? He caught like, he caught like <laughs> 247 bass in he two did. days. Yeah, he, he did. He did. He crushed them mm-hmm. and got zero work done. But we did our podcast last week before Lake Murray. Oh yeah, sure. we'll talk a little bit about it yeah. and what's yeah, upcoming here at Santee. Yeah, was, that, was that before the tournament? Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Gosh, Did you guys have predictions yeah. that uh, that lived up to? We were dead on on everything. <laughs> we, we did it just like this right before practice. <laughs> we did it just like this right before practice. So it sort of told our thoughts of what was going to happen. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, it was good. So, it Chris, let's hear your thoughts about what was going to happen in Lake Murray. Oh, <laughs> let's, hear thought, I, let's hear her thoughts after I, now. No, yeah, that would be perfect. I yeah, mean, I, was way off. I was way off. I thought it was going to be full-on top water stuff. Because the only thing, only thing I went off of was like two weeks prior that MLF tournament, you know, and, and there was already mm-hmm. some schooling activity. There was guys that were catching them bedding. Guys were reporting, you know, empty beds. I was like, oh, we got this. This is going to be full-on post bond. Boy, was I wrong. Oh, my gosh. Yep. It was crazy. Yep. That lake is really, really heavy healthy right now yeah you could tell because i was kind of on the same page the same train of thought that you had mm-hmm. but you could tell that how many bass truly live in a fishery when yep. you have yeah. a second spawn yes and it's just as big as the first mm-hmm. yeah. or close anyway mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. well that's that's what you know i remember calling canterbury in practice and i'm like i'm gonna spend the rest of the day marking beds and trying to you know mark all these fish and that mm-hmm. way i know where they're at and he's like forget all that man just go find them in the tournament there's gonna be yeah. fish everywhere yeah <laughs> and i'm <laughs> like no true. i like I, true. but that was but, the best thing to do is fish mm-hmm. new and i didn't do it on day three well, well, it. but it's the best me. thing yeah. to do if you're gonna commit to bed fishing and i'm glad i did yeah. mark the ones that i did mark because i was able to run real quick mm-hmm. i was in between points I'm like, dude, I need to let these fish rest, or there's people on the couple places I want to go. I know where there's a three and a half pounder. Let me go catch it real quick. Boom. Sure. It just took a little pressure off. And so then I could go back and commit to trying to get, you know, I was only getting eight or 10 bites a day on those bars, and not every one of them were big. Yeah. Some of them you had to call through some two pounders. So th- that helped me. But if I was going to commit to bed fishing, like Drew and some of those guys, John did, Cox, 100%. John, yeah, just, yeah, just roll with it. But it was amazing to see how many new fish moved up you every, know, every day. day. Crazy. We had a new moon on Thursday, too. Yeah. And I think what happened, you know, it got really cold in the Carolinas like a week prior to us getting there, like really cold. And the water temp, it was like 60 degrees the first day of practice. Yeah, it you was know, cold. It was, it, was, it was down there. A couple. And when that happens, along with a new moon in April, like it's going to send a wave of fish just mm-hmm. no matter how big it is, mm-hmm. right? And that was the thing. It was like so many different parts of the lake had different water temperatures, you know, and it's like it set those fish off. It was crazy. You could go to certain creeks on that lake, and it was all fry everywhere. Every dock had fry mm-hmm. on it, gar- fry garters. You'd go three miles on the other side of the lake, and there was fish cruising around the banks getting ready to spawn. It was like, what is going on? So, yeah, let me argue this, though. So, like, uh, you know, Matt, you talked about, you know, a, a wave of fish, like a fresh wave of fish coming shallow. So what? A, how do you explain all those ones shallow that are, like, that weren't willing to bite? Because normally when fish make a surge to the bank and they just get there, they're freshies, normally oh, it's gosh. like nom, 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 they bite everything in their sight. But, like, they were so picky. Like, how do you explain that? Like, what? Like, those, why? Those are the ones that spawn, already had spawned. That I already think. spawned, yeah. Yeah, I, I think... Canterbury's right on some of that, but also, and this is just my theory, right? It's a guess <laughs> that those after the BPT, that lake got destroyed. Sure. And a lot of those fish that were coming in to spawn had already been beat to death on those points because they got released. They, sure. they, they got stage, right there. Right. they stage on those points. They go spawn. They go back to the points. Right. That's where they live. Like they right. live around the heron all year. It's weird. And then they just go to spawn. So that's some of the, and y'all can vouch for this. That's some of the most educated bass I've ever fished for my entire life. Just nutty. The other thing that was interesting, is, and I started figuring out throughout practice, was is you could tell when a point was going to be good if it was related to a really good spawning area. There you go. And those fish, when they got done spawning. They didn't swim out in open water. Like a lot of lakes, they'll swim across open water yep. maybe to go set up on an island or go out deep and post-spawn. Mm-hmm. These fish stayed connected to the shoreline, yep. and they would just swam the shoreline until they got to that long tapered point. Yep. So if there was one tapered point in this big spawning area, that was a mega point. Yes. Yeah. Yep. And when those herring collide with that mega point and those bass are there, they know it all. Oh, it's like awesome. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was a... Uh, if you notice, especially out there around those islands, a lot of those big herring fish, they don't ever migrate to the pockets to spawn anyway. Yeah, right. They, they, they spawn, spawn on right the there. points, around yeah. the islands, yeah. around the, all that natural cover out there on those points and I stuff. I didn't check so. the islands, just, and I kept talking about it. And, and years ago, I fished, uh, uh, I think it was a, maybe an FLW, a long time ago, 20 years ago, I think, my first year. And um, Ed Chambers, owner of Zoom, was my, yeah. my co-angler that day. Oh, wow. And really? I had found, yeah, I had found a bunch of fish on. Is there an island, Goat Island or something? Yeah, Goat Island. Yep. I had a bunch of fish out off Goat on those stumps and stuff, spawning. And and uh, anyways, it was. 
I kept saying I need to check those islands. And those never did. Too. Yeah, they were nice ones, dude. You know what's crazy, Eric? You, you know, you talked about that. Like, I, I'm starting to learn. I've only been doing this 12 years, and you guys have years and years of experience. 14. Over me. That, yeah, that's a lot. I mean, <laughs> not two but years. Like, it seems like it's. <laughs> Martin's been doing it for like 100. So it seems like the more I places. I started when I was 12, dude. Yeah, that's. that's so yeah, 112 that's, that's years. That's impressive. Seems like the more places I go to around the country, it seems like the more I learn that, okay, you know, the bass fishing handbook says you must go to the <laughs> you must go to the back of the creek, must go to the back of the pocket yeah. to find spawning fish. Like how many times have you been out on a main lake point like you were just talking on a non herring lake and wow you look down and just a little tiny little yeah. pocket on the main yeah. lake and like there's the biggest bass spawning in the lake, you know, right <clears> yeah. there. It's just crazy how more and more it's like they go against the grain of the bass fishing handbook. And we were talking off camera just a little bit ago about a little technique that's going to be the hottest thing. I mean, we won't talk about it, but yeah. I mean, it's just we're learning more and more with the advancements of electronics and things like that. But And that's a good tip. Nutty. That's a great tip. Like a lot of a lot of you tournament fishermen, weekend fishermen that, that fish during spawning season, everybody wants mm -hmm. to immediately flock and flood the back of the pockets yep. the creeks things like that yep. and some of the biggest fish in the lake you're not gonna see like 100 beds like you do when you flood the back of a pocket sure but you see you know 10 and they're all some of the biggest fish in the lake. Ones. so yeah got mosquitoes in here they're flying around like crazy south carolina i saw something on on when i was watching live day it was cool and we need to go back i, I have it recorded and just look at that and study it a little bit but they had a a, a catch map of the yeah. whole lake. Mm. Of all four oh, wow. Of everything that four pounds or bigger that was caught and registered in the tournament. Must have been Ronnie Moore's. Yeah. He, it and, was. Yeah, yeah. It was. Yeah. Stat King. It, it uh -huh. was, there it was, was really one even, little main lake pocket. Yeah. And Scott brought it up. Like a little bitty pocket. Ones. And it, it was just loaded with four yeah. to six Right off the main lake. Yeah. Yeah. And right. not just one dude catching them. Like None a, of us a went in there. Yeah. yeah, right. Yeah. And it wasn't like it wasn't like a pocket. And it was a point in the middle with all the dots on the point. The the, the, whole, the, whole, pocket. the whole pocket was yeah. like four and five pounders, and yeah. it was pretty weird. And like I don't think any of us three practiced in that Nobody pocket. Went in and it's, it was not day. far from Drove our house where yeah. we were staying. Oh, oh, every day. Like I almost turned in there every day thinking it was the turn into where we stayed. Yeah, and nah. I was like, oh, that's yeah. weird. Yeah. Where am I at? I'm almost lost every time. Next and pocket. somebody or several boats went in there and wrecked four to six pound fish. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Ridiculous. Wow! So something or someone was trying to tell you, lead you the way into yeah. it, but that and wrong you turn, yeah. and you didn't listen. <laughs> never, but, but, se never second guess your gut. Uh -huh. That's right. But it was pretty spaced out though throughout yeah. the lake, you yeah. know. And, yeah. and so that was interesting. The other thing that was an interesting thing that I think the viewers would like to hear is, all right. So when you get on a lake that's pressured or really smart, educated bass like these are this time of the year, these mm -hmm. fish know what's up. The fisherman knows what's up. Mm -hmm. There's you know, 150 points that are really, really good, and everybody knows where those are. The bass see the same baits all the time. So it's a couple things. It's boat position, like changing your boat position, changing your bait a little bit, mm -hmm. changing your action a little bit. You know, uh, was it, who was it? Kenta. Was the, Kenta was throwing the riser, mm -hmm. and he was subsurface. the Did you riser. see this, Chris? Yep, like a chatterbait. Like a crankbait. Like a chatterbait. Yeah. 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 Like a shad rat. Right. Yep. right. And I took a top water, and I figured this out the, on the third day of the tournament. I, I pulled up on a couple of my schooling spots in, where, when they weren't busting, and I threw a top water just for the heck of it. Worked it normal, nothing. I threw it out there one time, and I reeled it across the surface real fast. Didn't even twitch it, just reeling. It's just twirling in the water, dude. Koosh. I caught like ten doing that. Dang. But you know, it's just like they want to see something different. different. So, you know, as we all know, to go out there and throw a fluke, and we all know to go throw a top water. You know, also think a little outside the box and try to change that up a little bit. Dude, no one yeah. caught him on a fluke this week. Like, no one did. Scott right. caught some. He caught his big one on it, too. Yeah, so. I caught I caught <clears throat> most of my fish I did. on a oh, fluke. Oh, you did? Fluke. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I caught some. I, I, I didn't see very many on morning. live. Yeah. yeah, not very many guys on no, live. I, I, throwing I, I, it. Nobody. Either top water or skipping a sink right. or, a, you know, whatever. Yeah, sideways no, worm. Nobody Shaky head. Shaky head caught a ton of fish. Yep. Carolina So. Yeah, we learned a lot this week. We also learned to uh, <laughs> make sure when you enter a tournament, you buy your fishing license. Did you guys hear about oh, that? Oh, I just read about that yeah, today. Dude, you said that on the couch. Who yes, is this? bro. Yes, Chris, you tell him. For, I just read about it. I guess the NPFL, the winner yeah. of the NPFL tournament, which is, yeah. Was it 100 grand? Yeah, it was 100 grand. Had to be retracted because the dude failed the polygraph, uh, failed the polygraph test. One of the questions was like, "Did you adhere to the rules? And did you buy your fishing <clears throat> license? Like straight up, point blank, I guess." And he said, "Yes, I did." 
And then they say, well, show us uh, something along those yeah. lines. And, oh, wait, uh, 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 it didn't go through. I entered my information, but it never went through. So, I don't so, have yeah, it. So in his mind, he thought he purchased it. Because in his defense, the, and I feel terrible for the guy, because we travel state right. to state. Well, we don't state. know if that's what happened exactly. Right. That's the story. Right. So, right. Well, yeah, that, right. Yeah, that's if he true. has that's proof true. where he could yeah. show, like, sure. this is where I went to the site. You yes. can see the right. date. Or, yes. Here's my screen that yes. it still says on my information. Mm -hmm. That's maybe, I don't know the story, and I don't want to get into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if, if he legitimately could prove that he went to that site, yep. he entered everything in, and just there was some little error that where maybe sucks, the internet man. went out for oh, a second. Like a payment. Well, he didn't have a receipt confirmation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that was the deal that was the, You would the think you would do that because you screenshot it. That's what I do. I get my thing. You and, it's email, receipt, and it's you emailed to you, though, yeah. also. Right. So. And I only heard about it with, a you know, there was a the MPFL, which is the tournament organization. They, right. they made an official statement, yeah. which, is, which is what – you know, all of them should do when something like that happens, when yeah. there's all this, like, you know how fishermen all, we all love spreading rumors, right? I mean, that's what fishermen do. <laughs> I mean, it's just like, it needs to be facts. Drop the facts right then, right there, just to protect everyone that's involved, you know, and, and I don't we, remember the guy's name or anything. We've but. seen that happen more than FLW. I know it's happened like at Champlain where somebody was fishing in Vermont waters and mm -hmm. didn't have a Vermont license, mm -hmm. you know, stuff like that. But he had a license for New York and didn't have a Vermont, but, that's terrible. A hundred thousand dollars. A couple oh. bad things that happened. I mean, Ron Nelson, it cost him a win. Really? Well, not the license deal, but he remember he was fishing in the off limits? Oh, yeah. And you told me about that it. That was last week, yeah. In, in the FLW. Um, tackle Warehouse Invitation. Tackle Warehouse Invitation. Sorry, I can't mm. remember the name of them. He had a limit. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, he got to throw them back. He had start, he'd wasted two or three oh, hours. Wow. He had a big lead. Wow. Mm -hmm. and, and he had to turn the them all day, loose. He did he catch all the limits because there were shed spawning, yeah. caught like a oh. limit and stuff. Caught oh. a whole limit, like 13, 14 pounds, had to turn them all loose. Or this is start what? Start over. And start over. Now, back in the day, I, I, I think, and I might be wrong, they used to DQ you if you fished in the off limits for the day. I think that right? so. Yeah. yeah. Oh, if you yeah. say so, they cast. So yeah. at least he got another chance. You know? And I like that. I like that. Yeah, he had to turn all his fish loose, and then they had to recheck his live wells, whatever, restart him. Right. And he got a chance to go back out, which, yeah. which is understandable. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah. reasonable. That's absolutely reasonable. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. There's Several always, things there's, happen. Yeah, you know, but, you know, let's think about all the crazy stuff. That's a good topic for this podcast, yeah. maybe. <laughs> some of the crazy things that's happened. What not yeah. to do. Who was the guy that was late when the one-on-one FLW tournament was late? Uh, he won Beaver Lake. Came back out of retirement and won Beaver Lake a couple hmm. years ago on buzz bait. Oh, oh about, uh, Johnny, McCombs. Uh, Johnny McCombs. McCombs. Yeah, McCombs. Yeah, McCombs. I didn't know when he was late. McCombs, all right. So this was back. So I've been fishing. I fished at FLW for 20 years. So this was probably like 2000. Okay. I won Pascagoula in 2000. And in 2001, we went back to Pascagoula. And I didn't do good in that tournament. Johnny McCombs would have won the tournament. And he came in what he thought was early. And he was fishing around the, the, the area uh -oh. like they could see him over there. Mm-hmm. And I guess they had changed the time from, say, 3 o'clock to 2.45 oh in the end. Oh, my gosh. And he just <laughs> forgot about it. Mm. And so 2.45 hits, and they're yelling at him and think, trying to get his attention, and they can't get his attention. Oh. Somebody had like – so then I guess he runs over thinking it's like almost 3 o'clock, and he was like 14 minutes oh. late. Lost his Brutal. Lost, yeah. Or he would have won. He would have won the tournament. That's crazy. Yeah, it was a $100,000 tournament. Mm. You know, oh, my crazy, gosh. Crazy. So, yeah, over the years there's been – a lot of stories like that, really. Mm -hmm. So, but fishing. I do feel bad about the fishing license things. That if sucks, he tried man. to get that, yeah, you know, that's 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 a bad deal. It made me think though, because did you uh, check your South Carolina fishing well, license as soon as you read oh, yeah. that? <laughs> you know, yeah. Yeah. I did. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. Have have double check. You have to have it for practice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. every yeah. day practice. Screen shot. Every they day. changed that this year. They did. I had to do a random lie detector for this tournament uh, at Murray, and one of the questions was, did I have a valid fishing license throughout practice and the tournament yeah and of course i said yes and i proved it you know with my deal but you know like last year that wasn't a rule for practice i don't think it was it wasn't you just had to have it for competition yeah that, yeah. that so, got amended yeah so i'm you know i almost think now like i'm gonna i thought about doing this maybe tonight or tomorrow just finish out the year go ahead and buy all my licenses you can do you that can for all things. Things. Right. Yeah. yeah that's right but a, lot them all, a lot of them are seven day you know seven yeah, day licenses or whatever. Start date. yeah yeah hmm don't mess up on those start dates. See, I'd be paranoid that if I set did them all for the year, I'd screw up on my start date or something. Not if you sat down and did it right. If you did buy yearly, just started a week early just in case. Buy I'd still yearly. screw it up. Yeah, you probably would. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Santee, this is where we are now. Yeah. 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 And uh I took a hundred pounds. Last How year? many people broke a hundred here last year? Three? Two, right? Two or three, I know. That's it. Did probably. Palmer? 
No, Luke didn't. He had like 99. A couple guys had 99. There was at least two here. A couple sure. guys yeah. broke 100 pounds. Yeah. Two two at the Four. St. Lawrence, two here. It was, it was sort of the perfect storm, I think, to do last that. Last year. To, yeah, yeah, to yeah. do that 100%. last year. Yeah. Yeah. I don't – I mean – it could happen. It's like you got giants in it, but I don't think you will see that again this year. Do we? Uh, do we have any uh, past? You know, obviously, uh, public information tournaments that go off of public weights or anything to go they off of. Tournament. I haven't heard. They don't fish there was a there was a CBC. Like, <laughs> there was a CBC this past weekend. And what's the CBC? A CBC. That's just a Carolina, Carolina Bass Challenge. Challenge. So it's yeah. the so biggest one. It's the biggest. The biggest, uh, Ooh, the biggest team trail in what the Carolinas. Take? 28, Top 10 was 20 pounds. 10 plus but, was 20, but, now, but then it fell way off. It oh, was 167 dude. boats, and, like, top 50 was, like, 12 pounds or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, that's so postponed. what does that mean? Postponed post post Central. Central. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's it's just, yeah. Huh. Interesting. These water, levels, water levels are about the same. Maybe – I think the lower lake's a little higher this year than it was last well, this year. This one is, too. Remember? Yeah. Yeah, they're both higher. A little, higher. Bit, little bit higher. The lower lake is a normal pool. Actually, I think maybe just a little bit above normal pool, 0. 0.2 or 0. 0.3 above. Mm, yeah. Yeah, it was over full. And pool. last year it was 0. 0.75 low. Low, yeah. It's always cool going to these lakes where, like, you have options. So, like, all, like, the – you could just categorize it as, like, all the northern guys or California guys like fishing. They're kind of cl deeper, clearer lakes all the time. And and uh, this place is one of those places that has it all, right? I mean, is, is that – mean right? It's like the – Sort of, like, yeah. Kind of. I mean, you got the kind of cleaner water down on the south end. You got the real nasty swamp. They call it the swamp up here. Mm -hmm. Black water the swamp. Trees. Yep. And, I mean, so you get – and a lot of those Louisiana boys love fishing way up on the north end of it's, you know, the upper it's lake. It's changed here a lot. I've Has fished it? here back. I mean, I've been fishing here for 20 years, I guess. Yeah. But that swamp used to be like when you got above the bridge, like you could you could get lost up there in trees. Like Cy it was amazing. You could flip yeah. the trees or throw a spinnerbait on trees all day for four days of practice and never throw at the same tree. It was so. Gosh. And a lot of those are gone. I mean, it's a lot thinner now than it used to be. Hmm. Storms, yeah, tornadoes, hurricanes, hurricanes stuff, whatever huh. it is. Have really thinned it out up there, but the fishing is just still phenomenal. How do you make it better, right? Because there's less cover, wouldn't that? Yeah. I mean, there's got to be. It gets more pressure because a lot less of the, cover. I like yeah. a lot of the biggest fish used to be them. so much. You stuff that you, it was like places at Okeechobee, like nobody had been. You thought right. you was in a place where nobody had been. Right. Wow, I'm still interested to see if anybody taps into a uh, timber bite on this lake with forward facing Standing sonar. timber, right? The, the main lake's covered in it. You know, giants live in it. It's I read just a, a story. I can only caught like a. I mean, back at Bass was here, I guess, and he caught like a twelve or thirteen, some giant out there on the timber. main lake timber. Yeah, well, not not the, the not the upper lake trees, but like no, main lake in, timber. That, yeah, yeah, jigging a spoon or well, something. Why won't in that main be a good deal this time with the fish going post? -board? That's what I'm saying. I, I've never, never heard been or tapped. seen hmm. it. Have, has there been before. has there been a big tournament here? Has there been a has there been uh, other than last year because it was all spawns? I didn't count. Right. But this it, late in the year is what you're saying. Has there been a big tournament? Right. Right. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I mean, you've probably fished the last one. Was ever starts or something back in the day, right? We didn't fish this late. I, yeah, I caught thirty-two like, pounds out of the swamp day one of a tournament, but that was like in March. Yeah, and like a lot of people caught thirty pounds in that tournament. Yeah, it was crazy good. This lake is uh, known for being really, really good for about two months out of the year. Mm -hmm. I mean, really, and March then, and April. Yep, March and April. Hmm. May can be hit or miss, and then once you get in the summer, nobody fishes here. Matt, cat was, Matt was telling me he fished here in February. Yeah, cat fish is really terrible. It's, it's like world world this class. Is, cat this fishery. is the uh, what black camp down there or something? Yeah, like mm -hmm. home of the. I mean, world something about world striper best cat fishing. No, no, no it's, fish. it's like best cat fishing in the like, world, mm -hmm. arguably in the world. My dad used to guide here. You know that blue cat. Mm -hmm. My dad used to guide here. It's where for catfish. No, for everything. <laughs> oh, he guided catfishing too. He did everything back then. He did. Oh, yeah. He did stripers. He used to. He told stories about like well, they'd fill the wheelbarrows up with stripers. We're going down the dock. <laughs> That's and awesome. They had wheelbarrows on the end of the docks. That's how many stripers were in there. And then <laughs> That's just, awesome. The Great American fisherman. And, yeah. He can do anything. <laughs> <laughs> All the years that he fished here back in the day, last year was the first time I'd ever fished here. Like I just this That's one of the crazy. lakes that I just never. We never had FLW tournaments here. They had ever starts. I didn't fish them. You never did fish mm -hmm. them, did you? Nope. Wow, so I, that's crazy! I know, you never I know, came here as a kid because it was. I probably know the. This is might be the least knowledge of any lake in the southeast that I have. Like honestly, wow. like I've been to every other lake you can name it. I've been to all of them, but except Santee one time last year. Too much spawn. knowledge wow. can be a bad that's thing. Hard to I, know I like that's going new places. Yeah, well, it's definitely new for me. Lay will be new for me, but we won't talk about that yet. Mm -mm. That'll be for the next podcast. Canterbury's We're gonna do that at there. Canterbury's house. Yeah. We'll do it at the house. Okay. 287 times. How many well, how times have you been there? Dry? Me? Yeah. 
A lot. It was there last week. <laughs> it used to it be. It was there last week. I wasn't there last week. It was off limits last week. I've not been there since it went off limits. Let me clarify that. <laughs> Lie detector coming. <laughs> I'll take one. It doesn't uh, matter. Canterbury, you got randomly drawn from yeah, the Pelican. Yeah, I'll, I'll take it. It doesn't matter. Yeah. But, yeah, I've fished my whole life there. But We'll talk oh. about it next week. Mm -hmm. Any predictions for this week? Yeah, 100 pounds Talk about what's going to happen, What's going? how we're going to catch them. I mean, I think, I think some shad spawn is going to be a big player this week. I it's got to be. I mean, you got to get around it. Y'all think, think y'all think there'll be a lot caught off the beds? There'll be some. I mean, if that guy wait or is it? It's a team tournament, right? That CBC or whatever it mm -hmm. was. Um, I mean, twenty eight pounds. Do you think that's twenty eight pounds of post bonds or twenty? I didn't pounds see the batters? picture. Oh. Probably look at the picture and, and find good, out real yeah, quick. Yeah, yeah. Pull it up, Detective Matt Airy over there. Hold on a second. Yeah, see if we see fat yeah. bellies or skinny bellies. Yeah. And this is one thing that a lot of people don't realize pro fishermen do. You would think like we, you know, a lot of these guys just kind of fly high and, 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 and really just kind of mind their own business and focus on what's in front of them and not really worry about, you know, past tournaments and other tournament circuits. We pay attention to everything, you got like to. everything. Every little thing's a nugget. But you know what? You know what's crazy? A nugget. Every little social media piece mm -hmm. is a nugget. Anything le you know, it's a little piece legally of the obtained is a little nugget. Yes. One thing that's crazy though. These guys, not me, but the Bass Elite guys. You catch are a Bass them better Elite than, guy. I am. I'm one of them, but I'm just saying. I'm not saying it because of it. Catch them better than lo locals. Yep. I mean, there'll be a local that could win a tournament. But yep. as far as a tournament goes, they're going to catch them better than anybody. They're going to smash them. Everywhere, we, Scott asked me, what's it going to take? And I'll look at some results from the year before or something. He said, can't be that good. I said, dude. These guys catch what happen. live there. Yeah. They're gonna yeah. if they live yeah. there, they're gonna catch them. Yeah. yeah. All right. So first through fourth was 27, 28, 28, oh 29. Gosh. Now What's I don't have story? I don't have the picture, Chris. Yeah, they wow. haven't posted a picture. But uh they have an Instagram? So it might take a hundred. No, yeah, but they, <laughs> they haven't updated Facebook might. yet. So it might take a hundred. Top ten to get in the top ten out of hundred and looks like seventy boats roughly, it took twenty pounds. The weights dropped off drastically. Top 50, again, was like 12 pounds. So that's 167. And the Carolina Bass Challenge has all the best local fishermen in it. You know, it's right. Because it's the best paying team trail in the Carolinas. Except they don't let us fish it. They don't let pros fish it. Really? I don't like that. It might take 100. You know, yeah. I mean, but I'm when, kind when of I'm, thinking like the 26, 27, 28 pound bags. I don't think that's pre post spawn fish. I doubt that. That's probably spawn. Has I mean, be. we always talk about when we talk about weights, you know, local weights from the week before or whatever. The disclaimer is always, oh, that was a team tournament and those are local hammers. A lot of times it doesn't matter. Those numbers, those digits, 28, 29, yeah. 27, 27. <laughs> that's what these guys are going to catch. Here, yeah. this light, I think those could be post spawners. This like you has think? all those eights and nines and stuff. Even if they're spawned out, they're gonna be sixes. Five sixes is thirty. Yeah, right. This lake's full of. Seven, I'm not saying seven that they had pounders. all nine pounders. I mean, five, like Okeechobee to catch that, you have to have one or two nines, you know. Right. And then you know you, you're liable to have a three pounder in your back. Here, you, your smallest fish could be a five. Hey, you'll see pre-spawn tournaments here where, you know, the top ten has a limit, but like the next fifteen guys that get a check don't have limits. They but have three. The they have three that weigh eighteen. Yeah. Two that weigh fourteen. That's insane. You know. Three that weigh twenty, like that happens a lot yeah. here in pre-spawn. Right. Yeah, the day, the day I caught like thirty-two one here, I called like a five-four or something, and <laughs> one o'clock, and I went in two hours early. I called it with a six-something and went in early. So you and I only had, my big fish was an eight. I had a five, two sixes, a seven, and an eight. Is that flipping and pitching? <laughs> Just flipping a five eight jig, every one of them. Yeah. Canterbury so, flipping jig. Canterbury yeah. flipping jig. Canterbury flipping jig. So this week, uh, what are we looking at? Cypress trees, cypress knees, of course, but what else is there? Are there any grass? Is there, is there matted oh, grass? So, that, that time we heard in the yeah, fall. There is. All, I mean, there's yeah. a lot of matted grass. There's yeah. Yeah. certain Hydrilla, times there's, right? high, there's hydrilla. and mats here that they yeah. called them in. Big. Rocks. I tried to if forget there's a shad spawn, Heisons. there's some rocks to fish, right? There, no? Yeah. I mean, do the shad spawn on the Hysons? I don't know. They never mine? have fished Hyson much. Dude, you're from Florida. Florida. Well, you should know that. <laughs> well, no, they, they, they don't spawn on the Hysons there because the Hysons are back in, but they spawn on the outside grass lines, yeah. and there's no Hysons out there. On water that willow is big. Di is There's a lot of water willow here. I've never caught them in it. I don't even know if they use it here. But they spawn it. That here. I've seen that. Well, then there's a ton of that here now. It used to not be any, mm -hmm. but there's a ton of it here now. Hmm. Well, the bass spawn, I don't know if the shad spawn. And then the brush pile bite, right? Brush pile and bite, I think, will be a player for sure. Y'all see me out there. Scoping. Docks. I guess the docks could be a player, too. They don't, don't they post spawn like in the creeks yeah, and stuff sure. on the docks? I'm going to go tomorrow because the wind's not supposed to blow, and I'm just going to get out in the middle of that timber at the 95 bridge. 
and I'm going to let the wind, a little bit of wind that there is, blow me between there and the dam, and I'm going to turn my active target on. <laughs> somewhere. It's not a bad idea. Somewhere it's going to go down. But yeah. when the wind blows 20, you can't do it. No. Gonna Are they going to cancel it. then if the wind blows 20? Yeah. I hope. 20-something they will. I mean, if it gets is, a, now, if it's calm in the morning, but it's going to definitely get to 20-something in the afternoon, is that a cancel? I, they did, did it last time. It was calm as everything, remember? We yeah. went fishing that morning and got caught in the storm. That's right. Day <laughs> three. They, they canceled day three last year because of that. Because mm-hmm. this is the one lake that, like, once it gets to that level. You could die. You like, break stuff. <laughs> a lot of people are going to get hurt. Yeah. yeah they, they sent some guys out in the BF here, BFL here years back. Not too terribly long ago. And the ones that made the trek across the safe channel in the upper lake, they didn't come back. Mm. Nobody could make it back. Mm. Really? And that was, you know, that's the kind of decision that bass will be faced with. Right. Because legitimately, you cannot get across that lake I've, safely. I've the here. problem is because of the timber, right? You have to run the safe channel or right. you have to run the dam or you have to run the bridge at 95. And when you have to run a certain line, you can't drive through the waves you i've know, been you can't here navigate in tournaments it. where was, we blasted off in the morning in the wind and it was like a single file line of boats at 30 miles an hour going across the safe channel it was terrible <laughs> but i've also been here in practice where nobody put their boat in the water hardly nobody i tried i went and put in in a creek and i said me and my dad but boat we didn't have the boats that we have now but and we fished for three or four hours, and I said, let's go to the next creek. And when we went out, we almost swamped the boat. We turned and went back in. Took <laughs> it gets bad here. Well, yep. well, we'll find out. It's all going to start in three days. So we just Practice left. starts in the morning. It's going to be fun. I know. It is a little weird because it's like the back-to-back tournaments, I, I, don't, I like them, actually. But it, it, is, it is a mental adjustment mm-hmm. because we're going to launch the boat tomorrow, and you're just kind of geared for yep. what happened at Murray. and. Yep. I just don't know where I, I don't know where to start. Like I don't know. Like okay, I'm gonna go run. You can't just go run stuff here. Yeah. You can't just yeah. go. I'm gonna go run these points. Yeah, you go. gotta kind of pick an area. Right. Practice in yeah. it. I think I think the the winning weight here. I mean, Murray was phenomenal. Congrats, Drew Benton for winning. I mean, what yeah, do you have? Eighty seven pounds. That's he pretty amazing at Lake Murray. But mm-hmm. uh, those weights are incredible. I think the winning weight here is gonna be <laughs> pretty sure to be more than that. But the top fifty. Took over 17 pounds a day. 34 or something to get a top 50 at Murray. At Murray. Yeah. That would not happen here. No. I don't think so. No. I had. What did Every I say time we 32? say that, though, it yeah, happens. I had 32 something last year and didn't make the cut. Wow. Mm-hmm. And but that it was and really good here. Spawn, and that, and that was a perfect storm. What did, what did it take last year? I finished 50th and we only kept 47. Yeah, like a few ounces. So it was like 33. 32 something. Yeah, 33. Yeah. Okay. And that was that was like. Yeah. Perfect. I had conditions. 31 too. I finished like, I don't know, 55th. Yeah, somewhere 60th, right in there. Yeah. Like that. yeah, so you catch 30 pounds here, you're safely in. <laughs> no, dude. <laughs> well, he said, I said that him. at Murray. 30 pounds. I said the last oh, day of practice after a lot practice of guys guys is over. I said, I think it's going to take 32. Yeah. I said, that's just going to take 32, yeah. last day of practice. You can't I Well, I mean, if off. you go by, I mean, you, we go by the term Bass Pro Tour. Man, they only have 40 guys on the water, too. Yeah. 40. Yeah. You got the p- choice of where you want to yeah. fish. Can you imagine having 40 It took 16 a hit? day to make the top, yeah. to make the cut there. I thought it was going to be the same, and it was even better. better. It's crazy. Yeah, because it, it, imagine letting those points rest as much as they were able to let them rest. 40 people only hitting all those places. Yeah. yeah. We got 100 guys pounding them day yeah. in and day out. Well, yeah. and then, and I'm sure, and they had locals fishing. But after they exposed how good it was right then, you know, more locals started fishing, oh, too. Late. Yeah, I, I got no a couple doubt. buddies that lived down there that they were like, you should see the guys pouring in here to fish this place, man. It's oh, getting ridiculous. Gosh. Wow. <laughs> I bet the boat ramps will be full tomorrow. There? Yeah. Yeah. For, for sure. sure. Oh, at Murray? Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. Mm-hmm. Well, I think that's good, man. I think we should uh, wrap it on up, and i got to wrap some tackle up. Yeah, yeah you got to tackle it for us still. It's yeah, Matt, Matt did such a great job closing close the podcast that last time. We're going to let him do it again. I'm out. He's <laughs> out. All right, drop the phone. Let's go to bed. That's what back-to-back <laughs> tournaments will do to you right there. <laughs> it's, the, it's, 10 o'clock, it's 9.59, and I have to be asleep by 10 o'clock. Yeah. You You're in trouble. So we got to hurry. Oh, my gosh. You have a minute. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out. Uh, I know it's probably not the best podcast in the world, but we're trying. So thanks for hanging in there. If you stay to the end, I appreciate you. And uh, we'll do another one soon. So that's it. We'll see you guys. We out.